Welcome to The Weird Shack, the podcast that explores the weird and spooky. I'm your host, Ollie Tobbles, with my co-host, Rieske. Hello. Siege. Hey, how's it going? Jordan with Stick won't be joining us today, but we have a special guest, G-Man. Yellow. And today, we're just going to talk about random stuff. So, Chris. Yo. Do you believe in all the stuff that's happened with the Bermuda Triangle? What, is in, uh... All the planes and... Yeah, all the planes yeah. and all the boats and stuff went missing. Yeah, I believe the... Well, I not like the, missing, um, but didn't all the like electronics... Sunk, basically. Like, disappeared and whatnot. Like, all the electronics mess up as well. From from what I know, this... Well, what I've heard, there's supposed to be sort of, sort of like magnetic interference or something in that area. Um... Obviously, I've heard tales that there's supposed to be ghosts and spooky things down there as well, but uh, I believe there's is some sort of magnetic interference in that sort of region that causes all the um, electronics on planes and ships and boats and whatnot to uh, go haywire and, yeah, they just disappear. Didn't a load of the boats, like, just, like, stop working completely, though? Or didn't they, like, not come up on radars? I've not heard of that. I've heard of them disappearing completely. Because they um, found they found shipwrecks underneath. I mean, I've heard of a couple of stories where, like, um, the boats would just sort of float towards inland of a place, and uh, I've heard stories of like the ships just being empty with no crew before as well. I don't know how true that is, but. Maybe the crew just sort of like free down, jumped overboard, I don't know. <laughs> See, with the Bermuda Triangle as well, though, isn't like a lot of the boats in there like old wooden boats anyway? So like none of this like modern, you know, like mechanical stuff, what magnetic forces would interrupt? Mm, I mean, there's the tales of all the wooden boats, obviously, and disappearing. I remember hearing tales of a lot of boats that they had problems with during the world wars and that having problems when they were going through that region particularly um, the plane aircraft as well during the both well during the second world war when they were flying through that region and all the equipment was going haywire when they'd run out of fuel because they just didn't know where they were or where they lost the way essentially so you know I've heard of it happening on more modern cases yeah but as I said you do find like the older like wooden ships down there so mm, yeah, it's just a bit strange true. if it is just magnetic stuff mm, true but um, I, I don't really know too much about the Bermuda Triangle, to be honest with you. So. Yeah, I thought, I thought I'd just open up a little bit of it just to see what everyone thought about it. But um, in regards to, I don't know, do I believe if there's ghosts or something there causing it? No, I do think it's maybe something just to do with the Earth's maybe magnetic yeah. sphere, etc. like that. I've watched a couple documentaries on it before, but Wow, they mustn't have been that interesting because I can't remember them. <laughs> I've watched like YouTubers go into like go into it and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna spend 24 hours in here. Nothing's happened." They just go like full Sherlock Holmes. So. <laughs> well, there is like multiple areas with the same sort of effects as the Bermuda Triangle. I can't remember their exact locations, but there are multiples around the world. It's not just the main Bermuda Triangle. I've heard of that before. Yeah. Spooky. Mm. Yeah. Alright, so let's change the subject up a little bit. Uh, G Man, uh, <laughs> uh, what's your thought on ghosts and stuff? <clears throat> well, ghosts, I definitely, definitely am a believer. I just, it can't just be you're dead and that's it. Yeah. Like, there's got to be something else. But it's, uh, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> it's like there's something you needed to do yeah, before so you died. So you're still, you're still, you have a reason before you pass on to limbo or heaven or hell. 
Is yeah. that what you think? Yeah, definitely. But do you think... So you believe in it, but have you heard or had any experiences from you or a family member or a friend? I did live in this one house in Falmouth, and we've had some weird experiences. It feels like touching. I was up in an attic bedroom. I felt what felt like a muscle spasm okay. kind of thing, but it just kept going and it was less, it wasn't so frequent. Yeah. <clears throat> so it was like, you felt like someone was like, constantly... yeah, but it wasn't like rhythmic, like a like, muscle spasm would. So someone was like, felt like someone was grabbing yeah. you kind of, but and consistently. <clears throat> my mum's felt people touching her kind of feelings, like especially in the bathroom. And then we were in there about two years until we realised the tree that was in the front garden, we weren't allowed to cut it down because it was planted from when a little girl died. Right, okay. In that house. Oh, so you think it might have been the girl, like, randomly Possibly. gripping? Okay. Because my mum's had, like, visions of seeing a little kid and stuff. Oh, okay. Which is weird. That was like Jordan's kind of when he said he saw the girl <coughs> across... Or in his garden. Yeah, but yeah. You've, with Jordan's, you thought it was like an, his nan or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember her in that one. Weird. Right. Yeah, okay. So, how many houses ago was that? It was the last house. <sighs> it was a while. <laughs> a while ago. A while ago, when I was in secondary school. Okay, <laughs> okay. Any more modern sort of day ones, or is it all like older ones for you? Not really. I mean, I've had weird feelings around certain buildings. And so. You're like that, aren't you, Reese? Yeah, I got like that when we visited the uh, Jamaica Inn. That was a bit. <laughs> I just yeah. felt weirded out by the whole place in general. But Jamaica Inn and Bodmin, yeah. The second time when we went there and done the whole like ghost night activity thing, I felt better with it. Oh yeah, yeah, because we, we went for a pint there, and then we went again. A couple years later, thing. yeah. Yeah, we should talk about a little bit about that. So, we went to the Jamaica Inn for my birthday last year, which was my birthday about three days ago. And, um... So we all, we all went in the car, we all went to the Jamaica Inn, and we booked this night where we we got to play with Ouija boards and like dowsing rods. Uh, we had EMF re readers. Yeah, we had we had the um, is it EMF readers? The ones I that like can't remember. It's like green to red. Yeah, the electric. Yeah. 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 yeah, So we had we had those, and we had just recording normal recorders, didn't we? Like yeah. tape recorders. So we recorded all that stuff. We played around a bit. We they showed us where people passed and where the boys of the last year used to hang out and stuff in the in the building. We stayed in the pub and stuff. We um we all sat in a circle. They were like, "You can go off on your own now." We went for go off on your own. We went into the back area. I think it was like a yeah. beer room, maybe. I can't remember. I think the upstairs of it was like rooms for people to stay in at yeah. the time but I can't remember what the bomb we, we, was we were underneath it, it was like a beer room it was all like stone and cobblestone and stuff but we um, we recorded and we were like I can't remember what the child was called there was a child that passed away in there that they apparently didn't have contact with for a while and our friend Jade was talking to them, she felt like she was connected to them and we kept on asking questions and you could hear on the audio like we were like tap for once, tap for twice, and in the audio you could actually hear. It didn't sound like someone was tapping on the mic though. No. It sounds like someone was like tapping it internally, like it was actual sound instead of tapping noise. Mm. If that made sense. So yeah, we we asked like, hey, are you here? And it was like tap once, tap twice. And we actually hear the taps. It wasn't so much as taps. It was more like sound electronic clicks. Yeah, it was just weird. So yeah, that was Jamaica Inn. We didn't talk about the last time about the ghosts. No, I think what we need to do with that one is like try and remember as much of what we experienced and there, get it down into like written format and do a whole video whole just based on that. Yeah. 
and what we remember of it. Because it was an interesting experience on the whole night itself. Yeah, definitely. I do remember having a genuine scare in there from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> what, from a person? Yeah, I was, uh, I was going into the museum part, which is like at the Behind very end. It. Yeah. And uh, I was going there myself and, you know, doing the usual, oh, if there's anybody here, make sound, blah, blah, blah. And it was just eerily silent, so I thought, all right, I'm not getting anything. And I uh, turned around and I just turned my torch on because it was pitch black. And, oh my god, one of the other. One of the other like guests is just sat there staring at me. My heart just sank to the floor. That ter that ter terrified me for the night. At least they didn't like scream at you. Is anyone oh. there? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> they did. I probably would have just fainted <laughs> from pure shock. Because we went into the room as well, didn't we? We went into room five, which was meant to be like haunted. And um, was that upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Was it, One of the rooms yeah. was like meant to be haunted. We like. We did the dowsing rods and we did that. Um, oh, the doorway, which was yeah different fluctuating heats. Yeah. Yeah, and then we did the hat, the like heat scanner ball things, and we also um. Well, didn't he say it was broken? But in the end, it was actually it working. working yeah. yeah, it was weird. And we placed that teddy bear, didn't we? We stood it up and we were like, move it if it was, if if you're here, and it it fell, like close to me. Oh yeah, I remember that. But the then, bedroom. but then it was it was a slanted room and like it was just wood. It wasn't like solid ground ground. It was just quite weak wood. Yeah, but like I doubt the bear would have just fallen over. Fallen over, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, it was quite sturdily put yeah. up. I do remember one of the ghost uh, mediums, I guess you could call him. Um, remember when he said he was sat in one of the other rooms with some other guests, and apparently they heard a very audible growling sound yeah room, i remember that one the... I, I wanted to go in there but yeah it was just taken up by that one group for the whole night <laughs> yeah i think other groups went in there it's just like it was because of that happening more people wanted to go in there and experience something themselves yeah so we never got the chance to shame maybe next time it's a cool place all the jamaica in Full yeah it's right. if anybody's never been if anybody or any of our viewers never been there, I highly recommend it. Brilliant place. Even if just for the mill, the mill itself was pretty, uh, pretty lush. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Wow. Anything else? Um. Right. So. Aliens. What's your thought, G-Man? There's definitely other life out there. We can't be the only yeah. ones. <clears throat> for sure. I agree with that. But I don't think it's a weird one. Like they could, they could look like us. You know the way that media and like cartoonists see. I portray I... them. The grey men, something. Mm. Yeah. Like I massive think... forehead, thin chin, kind of. So you think they're more in our how we look instead of the big heads, yeah. big eyes. I think if aliens have came to this earth, which I'm not 100 percent sure. They have shown this on cartoons, serial, whatever, as something to show if they ever appear to us in mass numbers, it's watered down so people won't freak out. Mm. Because think, if, if we hadn't been fed this from, like, as children, this big eyes, big head, s slim frames, if we saw that, instead of getting fed it when we were young, we're going to freak out more if we've seen it already from cartoons, if that makes sense. See, I guess with the car cartoons it makes sense, because most of the time the cartoons are quite child-friendly, happy-go-lucky sort yeah. of thing. But at the same time, we have quite more like adult-orientated films, which are more aliens are bad, they're coming to kill us, take over the world sort of thing. But they don't always look the same. True, but like with like the aliens in the first thing, that was like their first depiction, and that's sort of what yeah. most people go off of, rather than kind of creating their own, because like everyone knows of like the big eyes, grey-faced yeah. aliens. So. But that's like that's like that's like what Area Fifty One has like with the like 
the cafe that's near that and stuff, that is the image that they mm. chose. It's not like the long head, tongue alien stuff. It's how people have been fed it since they were kids. Like obviously, mm. like aliens, the, the film Aliens, the xenomorphs, they're going to be a lot scarier to a four year old than a big head, big eyes thing. Well, um, what's the film called? I forget the name of it, but. It was like one of uh, the M. Night Shyamalan, whatever his name is, films. What a twist is like it, the aliens or some shit. I can't remember. <laughs> the twist That's, is the aliens. Because like, because <laughs> like it appears out of a bush. It's like a big, not big, but it's like human-sized, green-skinned alien. And like in the party, it scares kids. And it's like the film is like a horror-ish based one, but it still looks like what. Like it's quite humanoid, green skin. Right, no, I can't it's like one of those. Right. So like I get a lot of like the alien films, as you say, like the aliens with xenomorphs and that, they are quite scary, scary looking, but it's like the Annabelle Raggedy Ann that they yeah. changed it for the films. So like... I think they possibly might look like that, the green, grey, big eyes, big head, to scare not to scare, but in case we do get Invaded, they come in mass numbers. That's what they possibly might. Maybe not like huge heads, small bodies, but like different proportions. Yeah. Mm. I reckon the first sort of alien contact will, you know, like that everybody will know of that we might have in the future will be like germs or microbes or something like that. Do you think, like or, that film, like the film Life? Did anyone see that film? Mm. Yeah. They find like they find like a germ on Mars. Mm. Think of something like that. And yeah. they start like giving it proper nourishment and it becomes like a massive monster and it like starts eating people to get stronger and then it goes to Earth and like the ending is like it's escaped onto Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Like that kind. That's what you're thinking. So you don't think it's gonna be humanoid, you think it's gonna be like I think it'll be some sort of microbe or something, um, or maybe some sort of primitive animal. Or, like for example, on the um, pl the like on the moon, Titan or Europa or something in the oceans. Maybe like a jellyfish sort of thing, something like that deep in the water. I don't think we'll come across anything intelligent, not for the time being anyway. I don't think. So what you're saying is rather than the aliens coming to us, we'll be going to them, sort of thing? Well, like visiting maybe primitive life forms on some of the moons in our solar system, if there is any. This is wishful thinking, mind you. I don't think any aliens will be coming to visit us or anything like that. Um, although, you know, I'd welcome it if they did, as long as they're friendly, which... Normally is never the case when other life forms see other life forms for the first time, sort of thing. So, but that's just my thought on it. See, when it comes to um, finding actual intelligent alien life out there, I do think it could be slightly possible. But at the same time, with how quickly a like civilization can build itself up to then meet its destruction with let's uh mutually mutually assured destruction like with um nukes or just the natural decline of the human race itself whether that be through viruses or anything like that how do we know that's not happened on this planet before or how it's not happened on some other planets as well like a race has built up and gone and the planet's grown back over it all. It's all, you know, disappeared into the grounds. True, yeah. I mean, there's some theories that maybe alien, some aliens use like different dimensions of sorts, isn't it? So. Our man does that. Our man uses different dimensions. <laughs> our man, Mothman, sorry, not our man. Maybe Mothman then is an alien. You maybe. never know. Well, he's meant to be an interdimensional being. Um, or anyway. like Steve, like Stephen King's uh, It monster, 
Um, that's supposed to be like an interdimensional space monster, basically. He's yeah. He's meant to be like a space monster that's like just like light orbs. But um, anyway, uh, going off subject a little bit. Um, Chris, you know a lot about the moon landing. They are. Did they take any like samples of uh, like the ground? Yeah, they took like over 300 kilograms, if I remember correctly, of oh. lunar rocks and dust and that across all the different. Did they find anything? Um, from what I'm aware of, no microorganisms or anything like that. Um, and if you go to the Science Museum in London, there is one of the lunar rocks that they brought back on display, which is pretty cool to see. You see you seen li quite literally another planetary body in front of you that's quite mesmerizing makes you feel very small <laughs> all the um all the apollo 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 missions they all brought back samples and in the place where they keep them all they're all like labeled and like kept in separate containers and they're proper like egg tight and not left like the containers from since they picked them up on the planet they like them bring them into like these chambers so it can't get contaminated and what they do there is like say a as you say the museum say they want a sample for it they literally can cut a piece off and then that's when they give it out to uh, museums and like scientists who are doing research on it to like have pieces of it they don't actually like give it give it to them or they don't buy it it's sort of out on loan so they want it back and they like catalog it off and each piece and how much it weighs and everything like that yeah i got really into space stuff and watch load of stuff about it so i remember um watching some sort of documentary on youtube can't remember the name of it is going on about how um, bringing back contamination from other planetary bodies is a very serious threat to us as humans because we're not the most resilient of things you know we have an immune system etc but it's a very real threat like when a spacecraft comes back down to earth that it may have brought something from space or possibly from another planetary body so they've got all the decontamination procedures in place usually the astronauts are placed in like decontamination pods and stuff like that mainly because you know bacteria from outer space or something like that is a very real threat that could possibly happen um, there is a certain germ i can't remember the name of it it looks like a a lot of people describe it as like a little bear or something like a little tiny micro bear and uh, apparently that sort of germ can actually survive in space. It sort of goes dormant. Mm. Yeah, I know the thing you're on about. I forget its name. It's like a water bear. Yeah, water bear. It's like its common like nickname sort of thing, but it's obviously it's got its proper scientific name. Yeah. And literally live through everything and anything. Marvellous. Can it live through a bubble bath? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus that. Christ. <laughs> even one of even one of your bubble baths. Even one of mine. <laughs> okay. Um, next subject. Uh, G-Man. Next one. Uh, so the what's your take on Wicca and witches? The Salem witch trials and all that stuff. Pagan. <laughs> to be honest, I'm I'm not too sure on the whole thing. I don't know. I think there is rituals and stuff that people do do to do with that. Um, but I'm not too sure. Not too sure. I know my I know my auntie's proper into oh, witches really? and yeah, no, she's got all sorts of little like. Especially like gemstone stuff. Yeah. She gemstone get, stuff she's really into. Yeah, we should get her on here at one point. <laughs> <laughs> but now she believes like the power through gemstones. Yeah, yeah. Like certain things do certain things, mm. I get you. 
I'm yeah. partially like that, but not into it like hardcore. Like I like to read about it, and I don't think I'd ever do anything like that. But I like all that stuff. Sarah actually told us, told me, the other day her, one of her relatives, their job is a vampire hunter. I don't know how legit it is, or if they're psychotic or something, but apparently, like, all of the house is, like, old school, like, dark, gothy knives and stuff. Maybe I will ask her to put down, like, a written statement that I'll read back from her. But yeah, weird, weird. Could even do like an audio recording interview type thing. Yeah, true. And just play that back into the uh, yeah podcast. No, that's, that's weird. Like, how can that be a job? Some people are like that, though. I mean, you know, Tesco put out a job a few years ago to untangle Christmas light wires, so it won't surprise <laughs> me that there's a vampire it's, on it's the job. Same thing, isn't it? <laughs> Vampires. It's the same thing. Christmas lights. Vampires Christmas lights, yeah. <laughs> Untangling <laughs> vampires. <laughs> oh. I mean, uh, I, in regards to like, witch trials and whatnot, I personally think, don't believe in that sort of stuff. I do think that, you know, like back during the Dark Ages, people were very driven by all the religion that was going around, etc. Um, I even think that people used to accuse other people of being a witch. Just, just because to, they didn't like them. Yeah, like just out of spite and Well, don't don't correct me if I'm wrong, because you won't know anyway, because you know. Um I watched a thing on the Salem Witch Trials recently. Yeah. I don't know the exact numbers, but like it was like say it was like forty people got burned or drowned? Was mm. drowning one of them? I think yeah. it was, yeah. Um, like, out of, like, say, 40, about 16 of them were men. It wasn't just women. Mm. Men got killed for being witches as well. Mm. But I think, I'm not sure if it was, but I think it was, like... Uh, I'm probably chatting crap, but I think it was, like the sheriff or something it was someone in power that was like they did it they're a witch and then the town people jumped on it kind of thing sounds very familiar but it's like saying it's like saying um if a person ran up to you and be like that guy's a murderer and then a cop ran up to you and goes that guy isn't a murderer the people that you're running up to telling them they're going to believe the cop over a random pedestrian yeah. so the people that are in more power they'll believe them over someone that's nobody so that's why I think like it wasn't just women that got burnt drowned whatever hung it was men as well bit of like a power hungry tyrant sheriff that just yeah sort of went i'm not sure if it screen. was a tyrant but obviously someone must have been deciding who was and who wasn't hmm. maybe like the power went to the head or something and they just started doing it like it turned into a sort of sick fetish for them maybe or something like that so yeah so do you believe do you believe like witches could be a thing <laughs> In a sort of sense, maybe. Yeah. Like, not your typical broomstick flying. Yeah. <laughs> so you think so someone could use an object that they think is so much going to help them that it will make them feel empowered? Probably, yeah. But the way you sound. Way yeah, you make it way, sound yeah, yeah. like a placebo. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I mean. That's yeah. what I mean, yeah. But, yeah, see... I don't believe that witches were, you know, like, a real thing, like, able to do all this magic or whatever and curses and stuff. Like, I'd say they probably practiced these sort of rituals with nothing really coming of it and people obviously just, like, paranoid of it, like, 
one year crops weren't doing well so they were like yeah. oh blame it on a witch but from what I remember of like all like the witch trials and that the main one they used was like the, the drowning thing because if they were a witch then they'd be able to get away from it and then they'd catch him again and then burn them the burning I think was more of like a they're a witch 100% burn them yeah. sort of thing but yeah I don't don't believe in witchcraft itself what was I going to say but um, people back then there could have been diseases wounds whatever whatever people could have had knowledge passed down from parents to use a pestle and mortar is it mm. Pest yeah, yeah pestle to mortar. smash up herbs and it helped to wound out quicker and they were like that's not right that's not right that shouldn't be how it is they're a witch that could have been that could have been something because they still sell pestle and mortars and all this like pagan stores they had loads of them in the lavender pillow when i went the other night I mean, my, my wife uses a pestle and mortar and that to smash up her garlics for her spices that she makes. <laughs> um, she's a witch. But, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've heard that like a lot of witches were associated with like herbs and stuff like that and sort of alchemy yeah. as well. Like healers. And like I say, a anything remotely different to people back during those sort of ages... I think they just sort of blame it straight away on a witch or the devil or etc like that. Because the devil's people... associated with it as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's just people generally are afraid of anything different that's not imprinted into their mind from a young age, etc. Because there's the, there's the devil's pentagram and then there's the Wiccan's pentagram where the point is at the top for the Wiccan or it's two points, like it's an upside down star for the Satanism. Spooky, spooky. Yeah. Alright, um... I've got a good story for you if you want. Of yeah, a go for it. past experience I had. So, uh, this is what I'm only told. I don't have any recollection of this. From who? It's just what... Uh, both my brothers, my sister, and my mother... And my dad as well. They all swear by it. They all say it's true. So basically, when I was young, um, going like really young, like four years old. Roughly. How how old were your family? Uh, Obviously not your mum and dad because they were mum and dad age. I mean, I don't I don't even know how old they are anyway. But yeah, <laughs> uh, my brothers and my sister. I would imagine teens, teens, your family in teens. Yeah, I, I would say teens. Early teens, mid teens early teens okay um in between so basically what i've been told is i would just sit in a in the front room and the tv would be on but the old-fashioned tvs where it was just on static so you flip through your channels and it would just be nothing just a white fuzzy screen and static like white noise and uh where the tv was in the corner there was a like a enough space behind the TV that somebody could stand there in the corner and apparently what I used to do is sit there staring at the TV and just sort of staring at the static and then I would start talking to somebody apparently and uh, my oldest brother Wayne came in once and said like who are you talking to and apparently I said to him I'm talking to the red man behind the TV the red man yeah, the red man. And um, this happened on loads of occasions, he said. It happened over a few months. On loads of occasions, it'd be like sometimes two times a week, they said. Um, so my mother brought her friend in, who's, who's supposed to be quite spiritualistic. Um, she's supposed to be able to see and communicate, etc. With spirits and whatnot. And uh, she basically uh, came in, placed a Bible on top of the TV, 
and uh, being a fat old TV, it had a big fat back end basically. <laughs> the book crushed it. There was no TV. That's the best way I could put it. That's the best way I could put it. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, she put this Bible on the TV and just sort of opened it onto the first page, and she swore it to my mother that apparently the all the pages started just sort of rummaging through pages you know all the pages were turning i get you as if somebody was just flicking through it there was wind basically just flipping all the pages classic the film bible book yeah i get you (laughs) yeah um and i would obviously still just be standing there chatting to this guy behind the tv the red man and she said that it was related it had something to do with my dad's brother at the time who was um had very bad uh, a very bad sort of uh friendship with my mother i suppose you know they just did not get along as in-laws i guess you could say yeah um and the story goes that apparently when he when my dad's brother was asleep um, apparently, in some weird sense, he would project himself spiritually onto our TV and communicate f- to me. But, okay. as I said, I'm just going by what other people have told me here. Right, yeah, uh, I'm too young to realise. I don't know if they're pulling my leg or not. Everybody swears it's true. Even my dad swears it, and he does not like to talk about it, especially especially him out of all of them he he refuses to talk about it um i don't really know my dad's brother i've never really spoken to him that much um i don't even know what he looks like to be honest so i I just have no memories of him whatsoever and my dad does not just generally does not like talking about his brother either so bit of a dark history there who knows so, 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 your uncle yeah. could astro project. Uh, apparently, for, apparently. Yeah, from what I'm led to believe, he was astro projecting onto um, our old TV back then. And obviously, using the static, I suppose you could say, on the TV, the, or the white noise, the background, etc., to and try you and could communicate speak to, him. to me. Apparently so, but I always hear stories of little kids speaking to like imaginary friends and stuff like that, you know. So two things. Why didn't you tell us in the ghost one? Mm, I, I was going to, but I'd already had a story, so right, I, get I didn't you. want to overinflate that episode at the time. Second thing. Why was he the red man? I've got, in regards to that, I've got no idea. Apparently that's what I used to call him. Like I said, I have no memory of it whatsoever. Um, I don't really have a lot of memory of my childhood like that. Um, from, from like, you know, around four to seven-ish, I can't really remember much of it at all. Just like, flashes I suppose you could say or just brief moments I remember um, but yeah apart from that I have no idea why he was a red man maybe maybe he was red because he had a he used to get angry at my mother a lot apparently and try, even tried assaulting her at one point so may, maybe that's why I called him red, red man or something because right. obviously yeah. as you get flustered and whatnot, you just go bright red don't you yeah, I was about to like ask that sort of thing myself. Like, could he have been, as you said, the fact that he was angry all the time or whatnot? Mm. Makes sense. Like, like his aura kind of thing. Oh, like, maybe. usually if they, if people who do astral project, it's usually their aura. Yeah. So it'll be the I color of their aura coming through. Yeah. And if he was an angry person, his aura would be could be red. Red. Yeah. But um, no, I thought that would be a nice little story to share for this special episode for you. I like that. It was an add to it. It was an add to it. 
Shall I do one about my uh, workplace? Go on then. Go yes, on please. Go on. <laughs> well, the place I work has um, a basement. And um, it's not just me who's had like like these weird feelings down there. It's like you're being watched or there's like just like someone in a corner or something. But this one time when I was down there, this is like during the day as well. So like not at night or anything. Um, I was in there getting some stuff to take upstairs to the main warehouse. And um, I was rummaging through a box to just see what was in it looked up saw someone else what was like rummaging through a box looked back down looked back up straight away because I was like when did they get there and there was no one there I then asked around upstairs if anyone else had come down to sort of help me look for things but no one had so that was a bit spooky and um, not many people like other people walk there like to go down in the basement because of other things they've had like seen or heard down there but it's not just the basement what's like got like these ghostly type things going on um the cash office we have heard like what sounds like coins scraping across like the top of like a desk and like coins being put on top of each other sort of thing so like you know someone counting money in the cash office with no one being in there the first time I had this happen to me, I was looking for my um, like this manager at the time. And um, I thought they were in there because I could hear the cash being moved around. It's only when they walked in through the warehouse doors that I was like, what's going on here? I thought you was in there. And then the manager then told me about the fact that the cash office used to be like, the air above it used to be like a, I think it was like a pub or something. And where the, our cash office is, is where the pub's one was. And one of the owners of it was quite into, like, counting his money all the time. So, obviously, once he died or whatever, he seems to come back to count his money all the time. That's a common one for us to hear. Mm. But then there's also ones where on, like, the night shift, when we're, like, doing, like, a relay or whatever... That you'll see, like, you know, like the black figures walk across, like, the back of the store. That's quite spooky to see. But it's not just, like, the, across the back, it's also, like, across the front, and it's just everywhere like that. Um, other ones also are um, up in the bit where, like, the manager's office and the staff room is. You'll come upstairs and be, like, near the top of the stairs. And you'll hear what sounds like someone on a computer or like things moving around in the office. You walk up to it thinking your manager's in there and there's no one in there. I've had it when I've walked up there with one of my work colleagues. And I've heard keys jingling. So I was like, oh, supervisor or manager must be up here. Go look around, can't find them. Thought I was just ma imagining it. But then I asked my work colleague and they were like, yeah, I had the keys as well. So... The place of work has got like quite a few spooky, ghostly things going on there. It'd be like interesting to do like a night thing in there, but I doubt that let us. <laughs> no, probably not. But now that goes on like from what I was saying before with ghosts not being able to move on. So <clears throat> especially with the in the coin office, you said? Yeah. It sounded like someone was counting coins. That could have been someone who either owned or did that stuff before. Was, I don't know, like, they didn't know they were dead and they still had this job, they still had this place. They still felt like they had to run it. Kind of thing. Yeah, I get you. I get you. And there were, like, keys jangling and stuff. Like, it could be janitors and that. Yeah, well, like... Isn't one of the theories behind ghosts in general is the fact that for them, they don't see us. They see what they used to see there. Mm. So to them, it looks what it looked like during their time. Yeah. Which is why in like certain 
buildings when you see like a ghost it walks through a wall back in the day it might not have had a wall there it might have been a doorway or something that's a good point so there's always that sort of stuff see I've I've gone to so many old places and my old house was old and I've never seen anything I've heard of like family members seeing things and stuff like that but nothing at all nothing at all I believe in it though because I don't see any reason why my brother would lie about the woods and the girl at the end of his bed obviously he could have just woke up and saw something yeah. like the same when you like there's a coat on my door that's a guy staring at me kind of mm. thing yeah I've had that a few times <laughs> yeah yeah well some people are like less susceptible, whatever that word is. Susceptible. No. Susceptible. Susceptible. <laughs> That's the one. To testicles. <laughs> yeah. Some people are less likely to like be able to see or like notice them. Like, there's like, I won't say there's something wrong with them, but there's like, they haven't got what others what can notice it and feel it sort of thing with them. It's like, you know, like an evolutionary thing, like some of us can feel it and others just can't. Yeah, so you think like, in like 20 million years ago, there was a baby lizard that could see, that could see ghosts. And then it became a monkey and it could see bigger ghosts. Mm. And then it became humans and it could see all the ghosts. <laughs> no. I... <laughs> like it's like an evolutionary trait. What... <laughs> okay, I'm joking. Yeah, like what we've some of us have gotten and we like get from our parents yeah. or whatever because like on my mum's side my mum has like you know had ghostly stuff happen like where we used to live in Enfield Ooh. she woke up in the middle of the night and there was like a ghostly figure of a man on the end of the bed telling her to check on me and my brothers in the other room she went and checked on us, nothing was wrong, but in the end, what happened was she put my older brother in the room what she was in with my dad, and then she came into the bigger room with me and my other brother. I guess just to feel more peace of mind, like we're in the room together. Yeah. Um, but it was like, I think it was later on, on like a New Year's, Eve or something we had some family and friends over and we was all in like the um, front room and the front room it's like one of its walls was connected to the bedroom the big bedroom which is what the ghost or the old man ghost told my mum to go in and check on so we was all sat on this like sofa or around the sofa you know just having a good time and then there was a bang on the wall behind went in the room and on the floor was like a, you know, like the proper old big heeled like thick heeled shoes okay it's one of those on the floor like a suit shoe kind of thing yeah like a woman's yeah. one. Oh, okay okay um and in the or on the wall was the indent of the hill as if like something Ooh. had like smacked the wall with it but that room itself was quite spooky i remember like having this um toy thing which had like a face on it I dropped it off my bed on the carpet where it shouldn't have rolled and it rolled under my bed like hit the floor stopped then rolled yeah. under my bed I looked under the bed and the face of the ball was looking back at me and I just noped and just left it there I was like nope we're not gonna deal with that <laughs> oh, I picked up a <laughs> No, I just went back on my bed and just carried on with whatever else I was doing. I was like, no, I just, just going to ignore it. Got on the cover, I opened up the newest episode of Bleach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I had quite a few experiences. One, what Chris was there with. Oh, shit. In, not the place of living with parents now, but a house literally like two doors down, because we literally moved two doors up. <laughs> um... We was up, well, we was downstairs in the front room watching TV, talking or whatever, and the lid of the washing bin 
came like crashing down the stairs like just as if it was like thrown oh yeah i remember maybe the washing basket was downstairs and your dad was like fucking race take the lead you threw it down no it was just me and chris in yeah it was just me and chris. <laughs> we we checked upstairs for any wind or any windows open or whatever we then put it on securely and i'm from remembering correctly it happened again yeah you mentioned that um it's not the first time that it's happened before and we was just sat in your room with the door open and uh yeah he said oh yeah it's, it's happened before it just randomly goes down the stairs crashes down and as you say it like a couple of moments later it just basically flung off the top of the basket and went straight back down we just sort of looked at each other with this look of terror <laughs> it's like a, oh shit <laughs> sort of face yeah well it happened once to me after moving into the newer place but i then shouted up at it and it's not happened again since <laughs> well i remember the time when it happened to us i remember you just got up closed the door and we just went back to playing games <laughs> just left it probably that sounds like me Oh, I remember that. He was just like, nope, not dealing with that. Good oh. times, good times. Okay, um, does anyone have any other stories or anything they want to talk about before we call this quits? Oh, no. I'm sweating. No, I'm pretty empty at the minute. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Gordon, what do you think about cryptids? Do you know what a cryptid is? Uh, so a cryptid is... Bigfoot, Mothman, uh, the Loch Ness monster. Like mythical. Mythical legendary creatures. No, don't forget the cabbage squinch. The cabbage squinch, which is a made up made up character that Chris can say properly. <laughs> <laughs> um oh, I don't know. Cause I'm a I'm the kind of person who goes off evidence. I mean, yeah, there's been footprints found and Stuff like that and chupacabra stuff as well. So where <laughs> where they found like puncture wounds and like animals that doesn't yeah, resemble doesn't, any yeah. other predators in that area. But what about Bigfoot? <sighs> I, to be honest, no, <laughs> no, I don't think it's a real thing. But there's been sightings all around the world. So <sighs> Thailand has one. Uh, America has one, Canada has one, they all have different names like the Yeti, the Sasquatch, all right, so Bigfoot, uh, the Bumble Snowman. Instead of there just being one yeah. Bigfoot, there's, then there's maybe loads of there signs. is a species out there. That's very rare. Yeah, that's very rare and very similar to that. Because there's people in America and Australia that do tours of the woods that had sightings mm. and the people will be like this is a bigfoot nest and they'll go and it will smell like people have said it smells like smegma random nice. but apparently they do they go into the woods they sniff it and they're like this stinks and it's like it's like a really really poor hut put together which apparently is where they put their young in and at mm. night they go on tours obviously they're going on a tour so they could be like you right, Tom. Go, go, half a mile away into the hedge there. Smash a tree when you hear it. Monetizing. When you hear it, smack it. So they hit a tree, clunk, and then a couple of seconds later you hear clunk because Bigfoots speak through bashing wood against wood. Mm. So it's, I think, there could have been one. I haven't heard of any recent Bigfoot sightings. Yeah. But I mean, but I mean, like, for there to be just one of these things in each location, it's the same with like this chubacabra thing. Like, they make it sound like there's only one yeah. of them. Like with the yeti, the bigfoot. You know what I mean? I remember when me and Jordan were young. We um. We watched a video, in Mexico, which was like. Chubacabra found on found footage and 
these Mexicans were looking through this forest and they saw feathers everywhere. And they were like, they were like, like your subtitles, they were complaining about the chickens being dead and stuff. And they were like, oh, they're dead, they're dead. And the filming, no idea why they're filming. They film, it's dark, they've got like slightly night vision goggles. Like, mm. camera is not really good, but it's okay. And it might be just the, the blooms up or something so they can see better in it. But they go into the woods and they're like, they're like, oh shit! And they see a really scrawny man hunched over. Can't remember if he's eating or whatever. And they turn around, he's like really, like, really, really, like, anorexic skinny. And um, he, like, shines and they go, oh shit! And then you see them run off. I think I've seen that video. Yeah, like, he's really, really, really scrawny. Doesn't he, like, attack him or something? Or he doesn't up, attack so. him, he just looks back at them and they freak out. Ah. But it's not like. With anorexic people, like. The. The bones kind of match the body, don't they? Like, if they're slim, they're going to have slim rib cages. Yeah. If that makes sense. When he saw him, he was like. He was like a guy that wasn't anorexic. He just. He had still had, like, prominent ribs that was quite pointy. He was very, like, bony, if that makes sense. He was more bone than flesh. It's hard to explain. It was it just, it just didn't look right to like how a slim mm. person would look. But I, I that's that was quite creepy when we watched that. We watched that when we were like fourteen, I think. So yeah. I'll have to uh, try and find it and uh, at some point I'm doing have it in part of a video. Well, we'll do it. We'll do a cheap recover video. We haven't done the Mothman yet, and that's like the best. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying you want to do like more research on it, like yeah. get that out. But yeah, <laughs> um, Loch Ness monster. Well, what are they called? The plesiosaurs. Plesiosaurs. Mm -hmm. Ples yeah. That's that's something from after the Jurassic period. Before yeah. it wasn't the Jurassic period. I think plesiosaurs were. Can't remember. Either way. Dinosaur from the past in the present. Mm. A couple of years ago. Well, I remember them finding like a uh, a big prop of like a, a monster thing I in the Loch Ness years and years ago. I do remember them yeah, finding a big old prop. But and would a would a prop be able to float? Because people have caught pictures of like in the sunlight where it's just the silhouette of the head poking out yeah uh, I'm, from websites that I've done on research because I was I was going to do uh, old Lockie whatever it's called Nessie uh, Nessie that's it I was going to do Nessie on a previous episode for a cryptid sort of thing and um, apparently the like the, the famous picture where you see his head sticking up apparently it was debunked as being fake or something oh, I'm not God. sure how but it was debunked Yeah. but I didn't really go too far into it but in my short time in Scotland myself I did not see Nessie did you go to the Loch Ness? yeah I drove along it for miles and miles did you as well stand by the lake and look for a minute and be like he's not here, not real uh, well, we sort of Went into his car park and stayed around the area for a few hours. <laughs> Look, Nessie's car park. Nessie's car park. It's got a, it's got a car park, obviously, to <laughs> stick your. Well, we had a motorhome at the time, so. Yeah. But um, lovely lake though, absolutely stunning. Yeah. A lovely lock, to should I say? I went to Scotland once. I cracked my head open. I've got a scar on my ear. <laughs> oh, mate, that's a story in itself. Was it due to a ghost? Yeah, it was probably a ghost. I wasn't that excited to get a toy or something from my mum. It was a ghost. <laughs> did, you, did your mum assault you? Were you possessed <laughs> by the ghost? Yeah. <laughs> she was like, Settle down, Oliver! And she pushed me onto the corner of the table. Did you like, <laughs> shout back, I think you need to settle down? She was like, James! James! <laughs> <laughs> See, when it comes to um, Nessie as well, though, it's not like the only dinosaur what's been like a in 
more present times. Yes. There's that um, one of the long neck dinosaurs spotted in like the Amazon or yeah, some rainforest or a something. Pygmy version though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard about that. But there's not just that. It's been like people who have apparently sighted like pterodactyls and stuff like that as well. It's like it's not true. It's obviously Mothman. But yeah, no, like there's loads of sightings. It it could be like a time portal thing opened up, it's flown through and then just like flown back through again afterwards or something. Yeah. But yeah. Alright, I think we'll call it here then. Yeah man, it's been a it's been a fun episode though, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been it's been different. It was nice to have a little chat. But this time it's all just from the top of the head. Hmm. Alright, uh, thank you for having us, G-Man. Or thank you for being on the podcast for this episode, <laughs> not having us. Not a problem at all. It's been fun. Yeah, it's a good episode. And I think I'll call it here. Uh, thank you for joining us, staying tuned with us. Um, feel free to subscribe, uh, hit the bell, hit the like, <laughs> and... <laughs> We will catch you in the next episode! <laughs> Thank you! Bye, shackers. Thank you. Bye bye.